Now, as the bolt reached its rear position, the magazine was uncovered, allowing the empty case to be ejected. We use the diagram and take the bolt to the rear again. Notice the follower move up, pushed by the follower arm, rod, and spring. It pushes the next cartridge up into feeding position. Now counter recoil starts. The operating rod spring expands. The rod moves forward, pulling the bolt. The bolt strips a fresh cartridge from the magazine and seats it in the chamber. The bolt locks, and we're ready to fire again. The rifle will fire each time the trigger is pressed until the magazine is empty. Then, when the bolt reaches the rear position, the follower is forced to the top of the clip, and the clip is ejected. Here's how it's done. Notice the curved part of the follower rod. It cams the operating rod catch up, and the catch holds the operating rod back. Let's repeat it. At the same time, the rear arm of the rod catch pivots, forcing this stud of the clip latch down. The clip latch spring is compressed, and the latch disengages from the notch in the clip. The clip ejector forces the clip up and out of the receiver. Let's repeat this action again. The follower goes up. The operating rod catch is cammed up and catches the operating rod. The latch releases the clip and it's kicked out of the receiver. When the fresh clip is loaded, the clip latch spring expands and the latch again engages the clip. The operating rod once more is released and the bolt goes forward, loading a new round. Now for the safety. To set the rifle at safe when it is cocked, pull back the safety so that it is inside the trigger guard. Here's what happens. The safety rotates about the safety stud and this hook engages the lug on the hammer. The trigger can't be pulled because the trigger lug is blocked by this hump on the safety. One more point. In case of a misfire, the trigger can be cocked by pulling the trigger guard down. Watch the cocking action. Now let's go back and review a few points. A loaded clip is inserted. The follower arm and accelerator rotate, camming the catch down and releasing the operating rod which starts forward. The rod and bolt move forward, a cartridge is stripped and guided into the chamber. Now the bolt begins to lock. At the same time, the extractor snaps into the extractor groove and the ejector is forced back into the bolt. The firing pin tang lines up with a cutout slot and we're ready to fire. The trigger is pulled. The trigger lug rotates and the hammer goes forward. The firing pin is struck and the cartridge fired. There goes the bullet. Part of the gases escape into the gas cylinder and drive the piston and operating rod back. The bolt is hit, rotates, and starts to unlock. Slow initial extraction takes place. The hammer is cammed back slightly. The firing pin is withdrawn from the bolt face. 
Unlocking is now completed. The empty cartridge case is withdrawn and ejected. The bolt continues back and rides over the hammer. The hammer rotates back and is caught by the sear. Now the trigger is released. The hammer slips from the sear and is caught by the trigger lug. Meanwhile, the follower moves up, pushing the next cartridge into position. The operating rod and bolt move forward. The cartridge is stripped from the magazine, seated, and the bolt is locked. When the bolt comes back after the clip is empty, the follower rises, and the clip is ejected. Notice that the bolt stays open. Well, that's the inside story of the M1 rifle. And it took quite a while to show what happens in just a fraction of a second. However, a knowledge of how the gun operates will help you plenty. Whether you're in the field or in the shop, if you know your weapon thoroughly, you can keep it firing.